Broward County Parks and Recreation is the county's primary manager in charge of our native landscapes. The agency oversees more than 3,500 acres of natural lands, including archeological sites and restored wetlands, and indigenous flora and fauna. Aside from their historical significance, these lands improve air quality, provide clean water, and protect our county's biodiversity. Brer County Parks provides a myriad of educational opportunities to teach our residents about the importance of the environment and the value to our community. We offer nature classes, guided walks and hikes, lecture series, and 4-H programs to ensure a balanced lifestyle for our residents. Broward County Parks has educational facilities to visit as well, like exhibit halls and our nature centers. The Marine Environmental Education Center at the Carpenter House. partnership with Nova Southeastern University. We are committed to offering recreational activities to serve all of you. The division manages 6,500 acres, 22 natural area sites, 14 regional parks, 13 specialty parks, eight neighborhood parks, and five nature centers. Our division continues to stay abreast of recreational trends in order to provide high quality recreation experiences in our parks. And now, here is our feature presentation. The Herman and Dorothy Schuster Nature Preserve is an example of our efforts in land preservation, environmental education, and recreational spaces. Broward County Parks and Friends welcome you to a journey through this urban oasis we call the Schuster Nature Preserve. Here is a brief timeline highlighting its history. According to South Florida Vegetation Map, in the 1940s, the land was composed of cypress swamps and pine flatwoods. In 1974, Herman and Dorothy Schuster moved to Fort Lauderdale from Pennsylvania. They bought Ding-A-Ling Answering Service, a small phone service company that would become a global response call center and one of the largest employers in Broward County. From 1984 to 1990, the site was scheduled to be developed as the Forest Office Park. The project fell through and was never completed but two of the eight planned office buildings were built in 1987. Before we continue, here is a fun fact. Schuster Nature Preserve contains a mature cypress dome with large pond apples, a habitat that is increasingly rare in Broward County. It was originally part of a system of cypress domes east of the Everglades. Now, let's continue with our timeline. By the 1990s, much of the area surrounding the site was developed. By 1995, homes were built on one of the last open fields to the south. March 2004, Broward County purchased the natural area from 777 properties for $4.1.5 million using funds from the 2000 Safe Parks and Land Preservation Bond. Part of the agreement was to name the property in honor of Herman and Dorothy Schuster, who formerly owned the parcel. In 2010, it was officially named Herman and Dorothy Schuster Nature Preserve. Here is another fun fact. More than 75 species of wildlife have been documented in the preserve, including 43 species of birds. 18 species of butterflies, seven species of mammals, five amphibians, and three reptile species, 
In 2014, Herman Schuster passed away at the age of 89. In 2016, Dorothy Schuster received the key to the city of Margate for her leadership and philanthropy. In October 2020, the Herman and Dorothy Schuster Nature Preserve opened to the public. This nature preserve has a relatively young but fascinating history. Today, the Schuster Nature Preserve is found in a community thriving in cultural diversity. So, what are the benefits the Schuster Nature Preserve brings to the community? So the Schuster Preserve is designed to benefit the surrounding community by providing an area where people can come, visit nature, take a nice walk through the site, decompress from the urban world around us, and just kind of look at what old Florida used to look like. It's a two-part mission. One is for people to come and enjoy the natural beauty of this park, and another one is for the ecological restoration of this area. We have a boardwalk back here, which goes through the cypress swamp. It's a beautiful refuge for people to come in and enjoy. There's a pavilion in the middle where you can go and get a sense that you're not even in the city. And there's also a sidewalk that leads to picnic tables so that people can come spend time with their family, with their friends, and enjoy the natural beauty that Schuster has to offer. Yes, all Broward County parks are ADA compliant. And what I mean by that is we, when we construct them, build them and maintain them, we make sure that they are equal access for everybody of all ages and abilities. We make sure that uh, they're safe, that they are an opportunity for people to learn about education, the preservation and have enjoyment recreation and the parks and the nature preserves. When it came time to open the site, there was one last big task that we needed to do to make the site safe and beautiful for the public. We had to come in with a work day and pull all of the garbage and debris out of the site. There was 45 cubic yards of trash debris that had been dumped in the site and that we were able to pull out. Everything from car parts to appliances, tires, trash and debris, and it really took uh, a cooperative effort from several different sections of parks to come in and work on that together. And so what this did was give space for the plants to come in and thrive and provide a space where people can come and enjoy the natural beauty of this area, unencumbered by the touch of humanity. So Schuster Preserve is really unique in that it's the intersection of a series of different habitats from pine uplands, you have an oak hammock, you have a cypress swamp in the back. These little pieces of habitat um, are what the whole surrounding area at one time did look like. And they provide habitat for the wildlife, um, the plants that need those ecosystems. And Schuster also provides a view for the people that live in the area or visit the site to see what those habitats resembled. Before the county acquired this land, it was actually slated for development. So this could be a series of apartment buildings. The so way you have in a sense is almost a natural history museum where you get to come experience the plants and the animals that were in this area before people came here. And you know, development is, it's like a one-way path. So once something's developed, that area is ecologically gone forever. So what we do here is try to preserve the last remnants of these ecosystems so that we have the plants, the animals, the butterflies and birds that are here for everyone to enjoy and so that people regain that connection to the land. So there is a, a several different natural areas that are scattered around that have remnant cypress communities. It's really an interesting history what uh, led them to be what they are today. The surrounding areas were farmed and those farmers, what they would do is as they, they dried out their fields, they'd pump the water into these little cypress domes of Woodmont, of Tall Cypress, Schuster Preserve, and trade winds, and even into Fern Forest. They'd pump the water into those cypress domes and then decades later, we you know, developed these areas for our homes, our neighborhoods, and the wetlands 
they just remain dry and, and high above the water table where they should be. They should be in the water table. So when we buy these natural areas, one of the first things we do to the Cypress areas is try to come up with ways to bring the water back. And usually in the north part of the county, that means pumping into the natural areas so that we can bring water to the Cypress. This preserve, Schuster Preserve, acts as a corridor so that birds and different animals can use all these sites and travel in between them. And it also fosters the genetic diversity of the plants as pollinators move back and forth between the sites, carrying pollen and help the reproduction of the area. So really the more sites that we have, it increases the strength and the robustness of the rest of our sites. So the ways that we um, manage the sites, one of the most important things that we need to do is to manage the exotic species, the invasive exotic species. And what we're really talking about primarily are the plants. Plants that are not native to an area that have a competitive advantage, that maybe reproduce faster, grow faster, spread a lot of seeds. What can happen is that they can come in and crowd out the native plant community. And that completely can change the area and not allow it to be really viable habitat for wildlife. You can have a forest, but if it's dominated by an invasive species, that forest might not be functioning as habitat for wildlife or for even the plant community. So our goal for managing the invasive plant species is to reduce their populations to less than 5%. We really would love to see 0% and have it completely dominated by the native community, the native plants and animals. But that goal to reduce it to that level is really important because the exotic plants can really just completely change an ecosystem and crowd out the native species. So we really strive to keep them as low as possible to allow the natural community to thrive. Our natural areas are, generally, we, we do fence the natural areas. Uh, one of the important things that fencing does, yes, it protects wildlife that it's inside the area to some extent. It keeps perhaps dogs from the neighborhood out, reduces that. It may keep cats out that don't want to jump the fence. People don't really realize the impact that feral cats and dogs can have on the natural wildlife. Cats are really prolific hunters and will devastate natural bird populations. And so it's really important that we have these fencing and these barriers to kind of keep out these animals and also just protect what's here in the park. And it can, to some extent, keep some of the wildlife in, but one of the most important things that the fence does is it actually helps reduce dumping. Because a lot of times when we, ha when we have these natural areas next to a road, we often will get trash and debris dumped right into the natural area because people don't realize maybe what it's functioning as, that it's really providing habitat and they just see it as an open area to dump you know, debris. And the fence just kind of protects the rest of the area and keeps people from just walking in any direction. So some of our areas actually have a natural buffer and usually that's the vegetation. For example, saw palmetto can act as a natural buffer and keep people out, keep dumping down to a minimum because it's actually just like it sounds, saw palmetto. It's a little rough, it's got sharp edges and really grows very thick and it can act as a very good buffer for people and for uh, to reduce debris and keep, kind of keep that natural protection. Water is also another great protection. Um, if there's a water body on the edge of a wetland, that also helps to keep people from coming in and going wherever they want, and helps reduce dumping, and can help protect the plants and animals inside. Broward County Parks and Nature Preserves are deeply committed to not only preserving and protecting our beautiful sites, but also providing an opportunity for people to obtain environmental education. There's so much about Florida that's changed through the years, and in these beautiful areas, they're preserved and protected in a way to help people learn about what was in part of Florida's past. Schuster Preserve is designed with the public in mind. We preserve it for the ecological significance, but we also, it's really important for us as the county to have people really come interface and engage with the property. And so 
You know, studies have shown that being in green space and in natural areas increases happiness and a sense of well-being. And so it's really important that these areas are accessible to people in the public and into the neighborhood. So Schuster Preserve really is a green gem in an urban oasis. I mean, while you're in the site, you might be looking at cypress and pines and kind of feel like you're in the woods, but you still may hear planes flying overhead and cars driving by because it really is surrounded by the urban community. I remember the first time I walked into the site when we had just purchased it back in the 2000s and it was just ringed by invasive species like Brazilian pepper. But what then we broke through that and walked into the cypress swamp and saw the pond apple and the swamp ferns and these huge cypress trees and it was just such an amazing sight that this little green oasis had been preserved over the years. So yeah, while you're here, you may still feel like you're in the woods, but still be hearing the urban sounds around you. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the wonders of the Herman and Dorothy Schuster Nature Preserve in this Urban Oasis series. For more information about our natural areas, please visit our website at briard.org forward slash parks.